we're going to round this out with what I keep close to the door. Again, this is if I need to expand the two kits you've already seen. Let's say a tornado is coming direct in line with my house and I got five minutes before it hits. I'm going to grab this and get to one of my vehicles because this kit is mostly useless without these other two. That's just the way it is. It's the way it's set up. On the outside, I have Ranger beads, just like the get home bag, the green get home bag. I have Ranger beads because a compass does no good if you don't know how far you've been. So that's why it's like that. I also have, as a method of non-lethal self-defense, bear spray attached upside down to the front strap where I'm just using a Canadian jam knot and also a trekking pole tie. So I pull one side down, the can falls out. Now I have quick self-defense method. In the front pocket, I've got a couple more protein bars here and that one over here I basically have like a small electronics pouch that has things like charging cable I'll show you what it's for here in a minute it actually goes to this next item I'm pulling out which is a double a charger that works with my solar panel this is goal zero but the solar panel is a different brand either way I need this charger to hook the solar panel to this device so I keep them together there are four high capacity rechargeable double A batteries in there those double A batteries can be used for like the GPS and that's actually about it I also keep four lithium double A batteries for the GPS because in the winter time Normal rechargeable batteries and regular alkaline batteries don't do very good, but lithium batteries do great. So that's for the GPS. I also have this is two spare lithium CR123A batteries. That is for the H1A headlamp in the green bag. Um, again, they're lithium because they last a really long time in winter time compared to alkaline and rechargeable batteries. Matter of fact, the H1A I know from hiking, long distance hiking, that each one of these batteries is good for about uh, a week or more. And there's two in here, plus the headlamp's got one, plus there's a spare in the other kit. So I basically got one, two, three four weeks a headlamp without ever getting to the rechargeable batteries yet. I also have a spare rechargeable 18650 battery that works with the Olight M2R Warrior um, which also has a rechargeable battery in it and I have the cable to charge it with. Then I also have, even though I don't have any devices that uses AAA, I have a AAA insert for this battery charger, the double A one, if something would happen where, you know, I run across a device and need that needs triple A, etc. So that's what's in the outside pocket on the hip. In the side over here, where your water bottle normally goes, I have what I call an extended USB kit. It basically has a selfie stick. A collection of cables that I might need a wall wart that's high capacity I think it's like 30 amp or 30 milliamp hours and then a second 10,000 milliamp hour USB battery with a selection of cables I got the recharge cable for my Garmin GPS 64 s I've got a USB to USB-C, I got a USB to a USB micro, and I believe there's also an Olight charge cable in there too for the H1R and the M2R Warrior. Moving over to this side in the water bottle pouch, 
I have a Thermarest Winter Neo Air that has a rating of seven, where the summer one only has a rating, I think, of three and a half or four. And there's also in here with it a silky saw turned so that I don't puncture the Neo Air getting it in or out. But there is a silky saw in there. You can see it right here. Moving around to the back, I got a couple of things in here. The first thing I'm going to pull out is a titanium pan with a lid. Now you got to remember, this is as if my house just got blown away from a tornado. I need another way to cook. And mountain house meals are going to get old after a while. So I've got a pan that I can make soups in with a lid. And inside of it, I've got a partial roll of wider Gorilla Tape. I believe this is a one liter titanium pan. It doesn't weigh hardly anything. It might actually be a two liter. I can't remember without looking it up. Made by Tokes. Very lightweight. I also have an extended medical kit. You could actually call it medical and personal care. Even though I don't have teeth right at the moment, it actually has toothbrush and toothpaste in it, has some Lyco tape, has some skin glide, has a smaller first aid kit that probably has all my normal small bandages, that sort of thing. Over here I got some more gauze, but there's also a few alcohol pad wipes. There is an Israeli compression bandage, there's your chest seals, Monkey butt powder, which is great for feet, blisters. Another tourniquet. Uh, some wet wipes. Some bug spray. Some scissors. And some vent tubes. If you got to make an airway, by all means, know how to make an airway. So again, I consider this to be my extended first aid kit which I keep where it's easy to get to quickly on the outside of the bag. This bag is actually a little cumbersome to move around because it's not technically packed the way you would normally pack it and it kind of makes it off balance. Now, you can actually fit the other two bags contents in this bag in its entirety but it don't look like it right now and the reason being is because I got an item in here that's fully not compressed. I don't want it compressed. Again, because this is being used as a extended longer term bag, it has things like shelter and food and items I might need for a longer period of time I might be out. Right off the bat, I've got three 9 by 12 uh, one mil plastic drop cloths that can be used as super shelters again. I have this handy dandy tool that was actually given to me as part of CERT that has a hammer, it has a pry bar, it has a way to turn off gas, it has a way to turn on and off water, public utilities, and uh, it's really helpful. Almost has like a axe type thing at the end. It's really for prying, but either way. The thing weighs, I don't know, eight or nine ounces. Not very weight considering its size. Not much weight considering its size. I carry it in the top. Then I have another plastic bag in the top. I have an appendix carry holster that fits both my 9mm and 45 XDS. I have a leather belt. Spare leather belt. Just because sometimes I don't wear a belt and that would make my uh, bushcraft survival knife, my multi-tool and other things pretty difficult to use without a belt so I put a belt in there. Then I have 
this is actually the one that's not compressed and takes up a lot of space when it's not compressed but I don't want to compress it because I don't want to ruin it I have a 20 degree 900 duck down fill sleeping bag that takes up the whole inside of this bag when it's not compressed <laughs> it's actually a top quilt good for down to 20 degrees it almost fills up the whole entirety of a 33 gallon trash bag as you can see when it's not compressed it nearly fills up the whole entire bag so if I was going to add the contents to the other two bags though I would compress it because it's only going to be compressed for a short amount of time also inside here though I have enough food to last about seven days stuck in the bottom of, all the way in the bottom of the pack because it weighs the most this has got some drink mixes and protein bars that's got a mountain house meal some drink mixes this has some nuts and some more drink mixes and it looks like some slim jims some more protein bars and it also has some wipes for my eyeglasses there's an MRE it's the only MRE I carry I only carry one I think they weigh too much but if I need to heat up something quickly I've got at least one MRE that has the uh, way to heat up the meal very quickly I also have three chilies with additional protein that I made myself then I have some breakfast another breakfast another breakfast another breakfast a cheesecake and an apple cobbler I think that is finally all of the food it is of course the video shut off but I mentioned that I also have the Suntastic solar charger that can be used to charge the solar batteries or the AA batteries or any of those things and I also have a tablet that kind of has like my survival library on it uh, a lot of PDFs and that sort of thing reading materials including the Bible uh, that kind of stuff it is mostly PDF books now that I think about it. Um, but that's a good way to pass some time. And that pretty much rounds out that whole entire kit. Now this also does have a 3 liter water bag in it that I'd probably not use unless I absolutely had to. Um, that rounds it out. And again, the other two bags will fit entirely into this bag it's an Osprey Atmos or no this is the Aether 60 liter AG and the other two bags will easily fit in there one's 30 liter at seven liters probably only a few liters of the internal part of this is being used all right in the top I have a spare battery case that's the only thing that's in this by the way this top can be removed and use as a, pa a backpack by itself so I've got a spare battery case I also have so work sharp sharpener I also have an additional 50 foot a 550 paracord and here I have three of the UC nine hour survival candles free pack that is all that's in there and then finally I have three different sets of traps again long-term survival want a way to procure food these are snares I have a can of Zippo lighter fluid and that 
is everything finally. So there we go. That's all three kits explained, how they're used interchangeably, how they complement one another, how you can go from, you know, needing to get home and having just enough gear for a couple of hours to one day to multiple days to many days. Hope you enjoyed watching. As always, God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless your homestead. Thanks.